This is an Opal channel, isn't it? Why am I doing this? Well, Santa's left the building. We've had enough turkey. Kwanzaa's going on, and so is Hanukkah. We have received a lot of presents, and that's good. But what's next? Well, what's next for most people, well, not for most people, for me, is Tucson. Every February, Tucson, Arizona, hosts the largest gem and mineral show in the world. More than 80,000 people show up. All of the movers and the shakers will be there, particularly the shakers. I must admit that my intent in this video was to show you all the things I bought at Tucson last year. Well, that's certainly boring. Maybe I can show you all the things I recently bought at Walmart. I think you'd be interested in that. Okay, here's what I bought last year. And, oh, oh by the way, I bought this at Walmart. It's a rare left-handed model. One of the things I came across in Tucson was this Fordite. All this really is is paint overspray. Many, many layers. The cars sit on racks. They go through the paint tunnel. Then the paint is baked on. Well, that produces a real nice finish for the car. But what about that rack? Layers and layers of built-up paint. They eventually you just have to knock the stuff off or the cars won't fit on the rack. The factory workers aren't interested in that crap, so they just take the stuff and throw it in the garbage. Then later, of course, some dumpster pirate gets in there and says, Whoa! Gnarly, dude! Now these days, the dumpsters are open, but nobody gets in. And that's because car colors these days are pretty, well, let's just say, tame. Except for this one. This guy's got the perfect car just for you. Back in the day, people had different tastes. Mostly bad, but how about this chartreuse or this atomic tangerine? People weren't afraid to drive a lemon yellow Chevy or a hot pink one. How about this saffron orange or maybe Congo pink and white, metallic teal, baby blue, mint green and white. Back then, the family was proud to be seen in their piggy pink Cadillac, android green, gunmetal blue, and of course, arrest me red, followed closely by arrest you blue. Now, I must admit, I don't know why I, I wanted Fordite to begin with. Chances are, I really just saw it there, and I bought it, and I was kind of disappointed because it was new. I mean, I really didn't even want Fordite to begin with. If I was going to get Fordite, I was going to get Fordite, so... I asked around, and someone pointed me to this. Now, this was made intentionally to look like Fordite from back in the day when people were brave enough to drive chartreuse colored cars. You know, mocha, magenta, this sort of an aqua, every color of the rainbow, orange, yellow. People were brave. People were stupid. People had bad taste. But this is the color of old Fordite. But unfortunately, this is not Fordite. They painted this side with poorly with varnish to, to let you know what it would look like once it's polished. And maybe people just want, you know, rainbow rock. You just cut it like that. But the, the, the reason Fordite is so cool is because it, it it's comes from pieces of, of curved uh, structures within the, the paint factory. And so when you cut in, it's going over this curve and it and displays the colors. It just lays them out in a neat pattern. If I cut this, even if I cut it at an angle like that, it, they're just, they, they might be wider spaced, but there's going to be no interesting curves and no interesting patterns made. But I did notice that down on this end, there is some curvature. So if you cut like that, maybe you'd get some. On the end, they tried to mix it up a little bit, and, and that might also produce an interesting pattern. But I think you could get some uh, some of the original Fordite pattern uh, here. The rest of it, I don't know. Make a nice paperweight. It's heavy. Okay, now you guys know that I'm the first to admit when I'm wrong. Actually, I'm sort of the last person to admit that I'm wrong. In fact, let's just put it this way. I'm never wrong. Never wrong. Except when I am, of course. Remember the Fordite? The fake Fordite? Well, look at this. How cool is that? I, I took this and I polished it. I cut it on the edge where it had the interesting patterns. 
but how nice is that? Imagine driving down the road in a lime green Ford. Well, in this case, it's not really Ford. It's, have you driven a Chevy lately? This ain't your father's Fordite. Oh, wait a minute. This is your father's Fordite. They don't make cars in these colors anymore. Chicken sh how about one that's just multicolored like that? I'd drive one. In fact, I do drive one. Well, except that it's it sort of it sort of looks completely black. But other than that, well, finally, after some extensive research, I made a great discovery. This material, this fake Fordite, is actually has a name, and it's called cal silica, also known as wait for it peanut wood. So if you want to make some peanut wood you get some calcium carbonate or limestone. You put in a bunch of dye, mix in a bunch of epoxy, pour it out, then you've got one color layer. Then do that with about a dozen more colors and let it dry and you've got cal silica. I'm sure all of you are going to be mixing it up just as soon as you finish watching this video. And I guarantee you that if you work with this stuff long enough, you'll eventually get the bird. A little bit more about Tucson. The Gem and Mineral Show really is a group of about 50 shows spread out all over Tucson, from the convention center to these giant tents that they set up in hotels, motels, everywhere you can look in Tucson, there's a gem show. And you can buy anything. You can buy rough gems. You can buy rough rocks. You can buy fine gems, extremely good jewelry, cheap jewelry, cheap beads, amylite. Anything that you want is available in Tucson. Big rocks. Big, big rocks. And I encourage you to buy a huge rock if you're there. She bought one and she's happy. Also fossils. Did I mention fossils? Many, many fossils there, including also meteorites. And remember, I'll be there. Well, I really don't have a booth. This one belongs to someone else. <laughs> In Tucson, I'm just a spectator like everybody else. Most of the shows are open to the public, but a couple of them you may have to try to finagle your way in. Just ask someone to bring you in as a guest. And since this is obviously an Opal channel, I would like to tell you that the best Opal show there is the GJX, the Gem and Jewelry Exchange. It's in the big tent across from the convention center. Well, I'm not sure how I got onto Fordite or Cal Silica. I'd intended to do on a video on white opal or on cutting Ethiopian opal. I bought both the white opal and the Ethiopian opal at last year's Tucson show. Those were my two choices, and I guess I blew it. I'll get it next time. Now, for those of you interested in what I bought in Tucson last year, here you go. Let's get to opal. This is chocolate opal from the Shua province of Ethiopia. This is the stuff that cracks all the time, and it proved to not be good enough for the gem trade. This is Mexican opal. As far as I'm concerned, nothing good comes in a olive jar except maybe olives actually this opal might be pretty good you can never tell until you dry it out and see if it cracks this is in situ mexican opal looks great this is white girasol opal from madagascar it's nice and clear some of it's pink this is not also from madagascar common green opal it's interesting but Seems like it cracked on me. From Peru, we have Andean blue opal and Peruvian pink opal. Nice common opals, very pretty. A uh, labradorite from Finland. A guy told me that this is the best labradorite in the world. Fluorite octahedral crystals. How cool is that? You can put numbers on the side and play dice with them. Well, that's it for another episode. I sort of got into 
subjects that I really didn't know that I would be getting into, but that's YouTube, I guess. I would like your input on topics for future videos. Just leave them in the comment section on really any video. This one is fine. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe and do all those other things, bells and whistles. And maybe I'll see you in Tucson. Or maybe I'll see you and you won't see me. You never know.